Hey, what is going on guys? DK, back at you with another video here to write in the four game NBA main slate on Monday. Before I get into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL slates on DraftKings. And can I just say, what a weekend of NFL football. Wow, those four games were, were amazing, especially that last one. Um, had a really good week in NFL DFS um, because I basically stacked that late game. So that ended up working out well. Josh Allen had like 40, but man, got to feel bad for the Bills. Again, just a crazy, crazy weekend of football. And that last game was one of the best games I ever watched. Um, but yeah, if you guys are unable to watch these YouTube videos, I also upload on Apple Podcasts. Link is in the description below. It's called the DK DFS Show. Premium content. I do offer that at patreon.com. Again, cover NFL and the NBA. Cover the main and the showdown slates. I'd like to thank the sponsor of the first half of this video. That is Roast Umber, guys. Coffee company in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And let me just say again, love, love the coffee. You have to be wired, I feel like, to play DFS. Um, you know, DFS is a grind, man. You, you got to be caffeinated. And let me just say, uh, these nitros, probably drink two of these a day. Uh, they keep me wired. They are fantastic tasting. They also have uh coffee decaf coffee as well uh they have bum different bundles so if you guys want to uh give it a try you can sign up or you can uh, order using my code a discount code dkdfs for 20 percent off uh again it's dkdfs all one word you get 20 percent off your order and again guys absolute fire coffee okay so uh, before we get into players and the prices for this four game slate let's log back mine up here from tonight so um, had a really good night in NBA last night, and it was looking really good tonight too. Like I was like, "Oh man, I think I'm, I think I have a chance to take it down." Um, and then Porzingis got in foul trouble, and then Malik Beasley played like two minutes. So that was that was uh, basically summed up my night. Um, but yeah, uh, Suggs, Jimmy Butler, you know, both smashed in the early game. Uh, Cole Anthony was was definitely disappointing, but he was pretty popular, um, especially in the high stakes, which we'll get to. Um, you know, $5,200 entry. Again, Porzingis had like 30, I think it was 33 at half. And he just got in massive foul trouble and then fouled out. Like he lost big, big minutes. So um, yeah, that hurt. Cat had like five fancy points at half. I was like, oh, cool, cool. I did go back to Korkmaz. Uh, again, you have to have short-term memory DFS. He was an absolute smash. He was a great play last night as well. Um, just got unlucky, just went right back to him. Um, and then I used Conchar as well for value. So that was it for the look back. Again, in the this is in the fifty three hundred dollar uh or that wait this is Hall of Famer. Hold on, was this one? Oh, this is a two thousand dollar entry. It was only six of eight, uh, so it didn't fill up all the way. But um, yeah, winning lineup was Jago. Uh, Corkmeyer with another massive game. Uh, Jimmy, PJ, uh, Boogie Cousins, surprisingly, Rivers, Ubre, and Jokic. So yeah, going over some chalk bust here. Um, Lamella was very, very popular. He was, I mean, everyone in that game, that was really surprising. Like that game, I was super scared about not having anyone just because neither team plays defense. They both play very fast. And yeah, I got very lucky, right? The Hornets just got blown out. Um, so I got extremely lucky there. Ant-Man was very popular. He was just fine. PJ was chalk. Franz Wagner was pretty popular. Ubre was massive chalk, 83% owned. Uh, he was a bust. Cole Anthony, 66% owned. Again, he was a bust. Um, Vucevic was relatively popular. He shot like four of 20, but yeah, guys, that's it for the look back again. Hope you guys had a good night and let's talk about this four gamer. We'll start off with the New York Knicks. So Julius Randall, the top of nine, seven, as I always say with Randall is more often than not, he's going to play about 40 minutes, except, except for when I play him here against the Pelicans, they don't close with them, but you know, I'll say 90% of the time he's playing close to that 40 minute mark. Uh, Cleveland has been good defensively and the price is up on Randall. So um, it doesn't really stand out. The only the only positive is, again, minutes are pretty secure for him. Now, R.J. Barrett's been having a really, really good, like, last month. He had 59 fancy points tonight for 28, 14, and 6. He's just being way, way more aggressive on the offensive end. He's playing huge minutes. So um, I think R.J. is solid. Might be a little bit over-owned based on last game. But, um, again, we've seen some pretty big games from him. So uh, I think he is definitely in play. Now, Kemba Walker's status up in the air. If he can't go, Alec Burks most likely starts the point. But Alec Burks is also 7K. So it's like, oh, we're not really getting him a discount, even if Kemba Walker is out. Fournier, 5'7", uh, you know the drill by now. He's going to hurt you more often than he comes through for you. But he does have upside, or he'll break the slate once every, I don't know, 10 or so games. I hate those slates, but it will happen. Uh, Cam Bradish in his first game with the Knicks, played a grand total of five minutes. So... 
that was pretty cool. Now, we do have Mitchell Robinson uh, questionable. I don't think he plays. He left the game uh, today with, what was it, an ankle sprain. So I would, I would assume he doesn't play. And we also had Nerlens Noel finally back. Um, he came in and played 26 minutes. So I would assume Noel starts here. If he does, I think he's a fair value play that probably plays, you know, 25 to 30 minutes. And then you, you would most likely get Taj Gibson playing the back of five at the flat min price, which would also make him playable. Um, so the two Valley bigs for the Knicks, if there's no much Robinson, are definitely uh, in play. And then quickly at 4-4, he'll be productive when he's on the court. Minutes are kind of been all over the place for him, right? But I do think he is uh, viable for GPPs. And right, the Cleveland side. So Darius Garland, I mean, I think this guy's got to be an all-star, right? The way he's been playing, uh, close to 40 minutes a game, and he's just doing everything for the team. Again, just has the floor of the assists. He's handling the ball whenever he's out there. Um, so I think he's a pretty safe play here, right? He had a bad shooting game last game. He had like eight turnovers, and he still went for 40 fantasy points. Now, the two bigs in Allen and in Mobley, I think both are in play. You know, they should play 35-plus minutes. Um, it's probably a little bit easier to get to Mobley since he's power forward eligible. But um, I think both both bigs are in play. I don't know if there's one that really stands out more than the other. Kevin Love, just more of a tournament play for me. The minutes have been down on him. Um, he does still have upside. Like, he can still go for, like, 30-plus in, like, low 20s minutes. But, again, more of a tournament play with the minutes we've been seeing right now. Lori Markkinen has already been uh, ruled out for this game. So we'll get to um, some secondary plays. So, you know, this grouping of, like, a Coro, Lamar Stevens, and Shetty Osman all get a boost here without Lori Markkinen. So... Okoro at 38, um, he's already been playing pretty big minutes. So I don't know if he necessarily gets a big minutes bump without Markinen, but um, you know, he'll play big minutes. That's a positive. Now, will he be super productive? More most off or more often than not, no, but he also is very, very cheap. Lamar Stevens is a solid defender, and I would think he plays more, which makes him again in play in the slate. And then Shetty Osman, probably the best of the three point per minute wise. You know, minutes have been a little bit all over the place for him. But I would assume without marketing, we get more Chetty runs. So I think he's the guy that has the most upside if the minutes are there. And then Rondo, he's been questionable the last like, four games. If he ends up playing, I think he's a solid value, assuming no limitations. If he misses, kind of solidifies the minutes, I think, for like Stevens, Okoro, uh, Chetty Osman. We would probably get backup point guard run for Goodwin at the flatman price if Rondo can't go. But um, he's not playing enough right now for me to go there. Also, Dean Wade at the Flatman, he probably gets something like they could start him too. We'll see what the the Cavs do. Like they've they have started games where, with uh, Dean Wade at the three before, so um, they can go a lot of different ways. So we'll keep an eye on the starting lineup for the Cavs. Chicago and OKC. So I mentioned Vucevic. He shot like four of twenty, a four of nineteen, just an awful, awful shooting game. But again, with with no Levine, with no Lonzo, it's going to be him. It's going to be DeRozan kind of run the show here. So I like both in a good matchup here against the Thunder. Uh, both are just going to play big, big minutes. I think DeRozan may be a little bit safer. But yeah, I like both him and Booch. Kobe White, you know, will play huge minutes. Now, the price point doesn't really stand out for, for me at 7K. But I think he's playable. Io has just been all over the place the last couple of weeks, right? He's had games where he's completely broken the slate. 43, 48, 38. And then he's also had two fancy points in 32 minutes. 21, 13, right? So the minutes are there for Io, but... Production is just all over the place. And again, the price would go up. And then like this gross value combo of like Troy Brown, Tyler Cook. Yeah, they're viable. Like they're going to play minutes. This team doesn't have a lot of options right now. Like Troy Brown played 30 minutes tonight. Um, he's he's 3-3. Tyler Cook started and played 27 minutes. Like you're not going to be excited about any of those guys, but they're most likely playing some pretty big minutes for this team. On the Thunder side, so Shea Gilbert Alexander is obviously the guy you're going to look to at the top. Most likely plays 35 plus minutes if the game does stay competitive. And again, he does have pretty big upside. We saw it last game from him. Giddy feels a little bit overpriced with SGA healthy. Dort more of a secondary play. Baisley's minutes and productions are, are, are up and down. It's really hard to trust him. Robinson Earl, a little bit hard to get to him too. Like the minutes have been pretty solid, about 25. Production besides two games ago has kind of been down on him. And then, like, yeah, Kenneth Williams and Wiggins are playable. Like, Kenneth Williams is a guy that if the minutes are there, he's probably going to produce. Like, he actually is a good point for a guy when he's on the court. So, I think he he looks interesting. Again, Wiggins, minutes have kind of been all over the place. He's not as good of a point for a guy, but he's only 3-7. Uh, Diakate uh, actually saw some minutes last, last couple games, 12 and 16 minutes. Don't know if it's enough to go to him, though. So, um, yeah, hard to really feel good about any of the Thunder value. Now, Pacers and Pelicans. This game looks pretty appealing. 
Uh, both teams kind of shorthanded here. So no Sabonis, no Brogdon, no Turner, no Warren. And Levert status is up in the air. So if Levert ends up playing, I think he looks great, right? Assuming no limitations, I would probably play 35 plus minutes and we'll just do everything for the team. So he would look good. If he's out, it's, it's probably me, Chris Duarte, running the show. Um, and I did a little bit of 31 minutes last game. That was a little bit concerning, but um, he would most likely be, you know, him and Goga kind of doing everything. Now, Goga's been playing really well. He's also been playing some pretty big minutes. 31 here, he got ejected. 35 in a game that uh, he stayed out of foul shovel did not get ejected. So the top two guys there for the Pacers, I think, look pretty good. Um, Holiday and Craig will play big minutes. Neither are going to be super productive on them on the court, but I think they're fair plays in the mid-range. Um, again, Craig, we've been seeing around 30 minutes. Probably see similar minutes for Holiday. So kind of indifferent on those two. Reset feels a little bit pricey for the minutes he's been receiving lately. And then the likes of like Jeremy Lamb and Lance Stevenson are playable off the bench, assuming Levert can't go. These are high usage guys, right? Jeremy Lamb played 20 minutes for 30 faints once last game. He's a good point for a guy. And we've seen some big games from Lance as well. So those two would be playable for tournaments if Karis Levert can't go. Isaiah Jackson will play the backup five um, and probably play low teens minutes unless, unless Goga gets in some foul trouble. So Isaiah Jackson is playable. And if, if Goga does get in foul trouble, he could play a lot more. Uh, Sykes at 34 probably starts at point and plays 25 to 30 minutes. Um, he's definitely taken a back seat though recently to some other uh, Pacers. And that's it for Indiana. On the Pelican side, another team that's shorthanded. So no Zion, no Ingram, no Anthony Graham status up in the air. We'll start with Jonas Valanciunas. So I think it's very, very safe. I'm not scared of Goga on the defense end or, or, or Isaiah Jackson. So I think JV looks really good here. Josh Hart, you know, probably going to be him and JV running the show. Um, Hart's price is up, but I like the matchup and I like uh, the usage bump he's going to get without Brandon Ingram. So those two guys look pretty good. Devontae Graham, if he plays, kind of indifferent on him at 5'6", we probably get low 30s minutes. Um, a guy that I do think gets a bump here is Herbert Jones at 4'7". You know, we saw a couple big games from him when the Pelicans were very shorthanded like a month ago. So he does have upside. He's already been playing the minutes. I think he makes her a pretty safe value play and it should get a usage bump there without Ingram. And then, like, as far as who else moves in the starting lineup for Ingram, I would guess it's Garrett Temple. Like, we've seen games when, when they're missing one of the main guys, like Garrett Temple just shifts into the starting lineup. So if Garrett Temple ends up starting, then, yeah, I think he's a pretty good value. Again, you're not going to feel excited. No one's ever going to feel good about clicking, you know, Garrett Temple's name, but he's also 3.1K. And then, like, if Devontae Graham is out, you're going to see a lot more run for, like, NAW and Alvarado, who would be both pretty good values. If Graham is in, they're more they're more secondary plays for me. Um, that's probably it. Like we've been seeing some minutes for Gary Clark, like a little bit, but maybe he plays. I don't think he starts. I would think Garrett Temple starts, but we'll see. We'll we'll keep on the starting line there for the Pelicans. And then, guys, second half of the video, I'd like to thank the sponsor, Prize Picks. If you're not familiar with Prize Picks, there's a player prop site where you can take over 100 fancy points. You can take over 100 points, rebounds, assists. Three pointers made. You can mix and match sports. You can play NFL. You can play NBA. So you pick two to five players and you can win at up to 10x your money. They have esports, tennis, college basketball. Again, every single sport you can think of. So if you guys want to try it out, you can sign up and use my code DKDFS. It is DKDFS, all one word. You'll get 100% match up to $100. Okay, and uh, rounding it out here with Utah and the Phoenix Suns. So we just saw the Jazz play tonight, lost a close one to Golden State. Um, Rudy Gobert, 9.2K, I think makes her a pretty safe play. You know, we're going to see mid-30s minutes from him, so no issue going to Gobert. Um, most likely, which one, Mitchell and Whiteside will still be out for this one. So, you know, Conley, Clarkson do get a usage bump, but the price points don't really stand out for either of them. Um, 7.2 for Conley and 6.7 for Clarkson. Bogdanovich, you know, does get a, a little bit of a bump as well, but he's basically 7K, so there's no standouts here on the Utah side. Ingles is priced up to 5K. That feels priced about right. Royce O'Neal, 4.8, feels a little bit overpriced. I think Rudy Gay looks interesting at 4.2. We probably get around 20 minutes from him. We saw Pascal get a little bit of the back of five run, but really, outside of Gobert, there's nothing that stands out to me on Utah. And finally, the Phoenix Suns. So, uh, Devin Booker, Chris Paul, based on my same analysis with these guys every time, Booker is a guy that has a pretty high ceiling, but also a low floor is not hitting a shot, right? So, he struggled shooting the ball last game. 5 of 23, he busted, right? So he'll, he has a lower floor. Chris Paul, a little bit of a higher floor, not as high of a ceiling, though, of Devin Booker. Now, the price points on both of them, you know, 9, 4, and 8, 6, 
don't really stand out on this slate, to be honest. DeAndre Ayton is doubtful, so we'll get to the two centers who have caused me just immense, immense pain this year. Mikel Bridges had a really big game last game. Um, last couple games gone for 39, but it kind of feels like a chase to me, and also his price is up. Um, now the two centers, McGee and Biembo. McGee's probably going to start and play around 20 minutes. He'll be productive when he's on the court. Um, again, played him here, played him here, finally faded here. He absolutely smashed. That's just been the story of JaVale McGee this year for me. And then Bismack Biembo, is he just Shaq now? I mean, can we talk about that game against the Pacers? 21-13-5-2-1 and and for Bismack Biembo. And two ga three games ago, 17-14-1-3-1. Crazy, crazy stat lines here for Biembo. Um, again, the match against Gobert is not the best, but um, I mean, they've both been very productive, uh, especially Biembo recently when they're on the court. So they're both in play. Now we have no campaign and no Jay Crowder. So I think Cam Johnson looks really solid for value. He's most likely going to start and play over 30 minutes. I think he looks really good at that price point. Um, Jalen Smith has been getting DNPs. Now with, with Jay Crowder out, maybe he plays a little bit at the four this game. I think it's possible you know, we're probably going to see Landry Shamit get decent minutes. Like, maybe he pushes for 20 minutes. It's gross, but he's playable. And then, you know, super large field tournament play, but he's probably going to play the backup point without um, Cameron Payne. That's Albert Payton. Um, not a great real-life basketball player, but actually a pretty decent fantasy player when he's on the court. So both him and Shamit, it's so, so, so gross. Like, it really makes me want to vomit. But... Um, they're both a flat man price, and I do think they see some run here without pain and without Crowder. So, yeah, guys, that's going to wrap it up for the video today. If you haven't enjoyed the free content, just make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. We'd really, really appreciate that, guys. Thanks again. Have a great one, and I will see you all in the next video.